Let's go ahead and try and find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix here. So, we're going to go ahead and find the determinant of this minus lambda times i, so the determinant of 5 minus lambda, negative 5, 1, 1 minus lambda. So that's going to give me 5 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda minus a negative 5. So that's going to give me a lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 5 plus another 5. Okay, so we know that our eigenvalues are what make this thing equal to 0. So let's go ahead and set that equal to 0. Now, this doesn't actually factor, so we've got a couple of different ways we could do it. We could do the quadratic formula. I like completing the square, so I'll do it that way. If I take half the number in front of lambda, it's negative 3. Square it gives me 9. So I'll add 9 to both sides. And so we've got lambda minus 3 squared is negative 1. If we only care about real numbers, we'd say, well, there's no solution to that. There is no real number that when we square it, we get negative 1. But if we allow complex numbers, there's certainly solutions to that. Take the square root of both sides, so I get lambda minus 3 is plus or minus i, and so lambda is 3 plus or minus i. And we've got two complex eigenvalues. Now for each of those eigenvalues, we can find the associated eigenvectors, which are also going to be complex. So let's do that. If we've got lambda is equal to 3 plus i, we get 5 minus 3 plus i, negative 5, 1, 1 minus 3 plus i. That gives me a 2 minus i, a negative 5, a 1, and a negative 2 minus i. It isn't obvious here, but actually these two equations, remember we would go ahead and say each one of these things is 2 minus i x1 minus 5 x2 equals 0, and 1 x1 plus negative 2 minus i x2 equals 0. Because the complex numbers, it isn't obvious, but these are actually just multiples of each other. If I take this bottom row and multiply it by 2 minus i, I actually just get the first row. So when I'm trying to figure out my eigenvector, I may as well take this bottom one since it's nice and easy. And so we get x1 plus a negative 2 minus i x2 equals 0, or x1 equals 2 plus i x2. The easiest way then is to say that my eigenvector, if x2 is 1, x1 is 2 plus i. Let's do the same thing for the other eigenvector, eigenvalue. So my second eigenvalue was 3 minus i. Same kind of thing. I've got 5 minus 3 minus i, negative 5, 1, 1 minus 3 minus i. Will give me a 2 plus i, a negative 5, a 1, and a negative 2 plus i. And it's the same kind of thing. The complex numbers make it look more confusing 
But if I multiply this second row by 2 plus i, I get the 2 plus i negative 5 row. So I'll just take that bottom row, change that to an equation, x1 plus negative 2 plus i x2 equals 0. So x1 is going to equal 2 minus i x2. And I get the eigenvector. If x2 is 1, we get a 2 minus i. For the most part here, I mean, we're having to do some complex number stuff. But all in all, we're just finding these eigenvalues and eigenvectors exactly the same way we did when we had real number ones. But there's something interesting about this thing. Our eigenvalues were complex conjugates of each other. Any time you've got a complex eigenvalue, the complex conjugate is also going to be an eigenvalue. Further, the eigenvectors we end up were also basically complex conjugates of each other. The one here, we had 2 plus i1. The only thing that we had an i, an imaginary part, was the 2 plus i. And over here we had a 2 minus i and a 1. This is always going to happen. Anytime you've got a complex eigenvalue, the complex conjugate is also an eigenvalue. Anytime you figure out what the associated eigenvector is, the complex conjugate eigenvalue has the complex conjugate eigenvector. Works exactly the same way, just with that extra little thing, where we can really do half as much work. Now that we know this, I don't need to go through this second thing. Once I get here, I know that just negating the i part gives me the eigenvector for the second eigenvalue.